before we start talking about suicide prevention, we wanted to tell you guys about why we made this video. Last year, we lost two amazing students, Chad and Devika, to suicide. We wanted to start the conversation about mental health and suicide prevention so we never lose another student. But first, we are going to hear about Devika and Chad and the legacy they left behind. I met Devika in eighth grade and immediately she was one of my best friends. She was always there to help me no matter what time or what it was. I'm Melissa Lee and I'm a senior. Actually, we met, um, I remember that was sophomore homecoming. Um, I was really nervous because I didn't really know anyone, but I met her at Cassie's house, like one of our other friends. And I remember seeing her just like walking in in this like blue dress and like blue like tennis shoes. And I, I don't know, like the way that she talks with people, the way she interacts with her like surroundings kind of really brought me closer to her. She's just so kind. She's really genuine. She's helpful. She's basically all the positive things that you can say about a person. It was like the small things, you know, like either it's like like a small math problem that I couldn't figure out because she was in, you know, Calc BC before yeah, when I was in Arbor too. But um, she helped me a lot, like not only like schoolwork, but also like um, something that she's really, she was really passionate about was the political system, you know, like politics. I think I started to appreciate things more often. Like, I, I would often like think, what would Devika do? And like, I, I always think that. Like, even when she was here, I, I always think that because she was such like a role model, even though she's like, she was so young. I'm so lucky to have had even a fraction of the time I did with someone as beautiful and courageous and loving and intelligent as she is. Devika was not just another friend of mine. She was unique in so many indescribable ways. Never did I see her looking at another person with a judgmental eye. Never did I hear her speak negatively about someone. But in the course of our friendship, her positivity and intelligence inspired me to become a better person and it still does. My name is Andrew Gelman. I'm currently a freshman at KU and I had the pleasure of becoming friends with Chad both on and off the field. I first met Chad when I moved here in sixth grade during our lacrosse season. My favorite memory with Chad was our junior year lacrosse season. Everyone called him spark plug because he would always bring energy and happiness to the team every day. The best thing about Chad was his personality. He's always able to cheer anyone up around him. He was constantly telling jokes to bring happiness to the people around him. Chad was someone who no one really could explain. He was just always happy and always shared joy with other people. There wasn't anyone that Chad couldn't make laugh. Hearing about Chad's death was something that I'll never be able to explain. To this day, I still cannot wrap my head around the emotion I felt during that moment. We were lucky enough to sit down with Chad's parents, Mr. and Mrs. Harrell, for two hours at their home to talk about what happened to them. Here is that interview. My son Chad was 17 years old. Just finished his junior year. He had just finished his junior year. And on June 12th of 2017, uh, he took his own life. It doesn't get better with time. Mm -hmm. um, and it is just a horrible nightmare. There's so much access to self-criticism now with social media. We never had any of that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what you guys go through is incredibly difficult. It's way more difficult than anybody my age ever went through. And I, never gave that as much credence as I wish I would have with my son. I wish I would have said to him, dude, I know this is really, really hard. 
takes a teenager between five minutes and an hour to decide they're going to take their own lives. I've heard over and over 20 minutes. So how could we get through that 20 minutes? Just hold on because your miracle could be in the next five minutes. Chad loved his friends. Right. Um, he loved his teachers. He loved his family more than anything in the world. But he didn't give any of them a chance to help him. None of them. Mm -hmm. Despite, so all of us, you know, have these questions of why. You know, why didn't we know? Why couldn't we have done something to help? Mm -hmm. He never gave us the chance. And that's the key message that I think kids need to understand. You need to give somebody the chance to help you. Anyone that you love, anyone that you can say, I would never want to hurt that person, you have to put that in your mind that you will not just hurt them, you will devastate them, you will crush them to your, their core. There's no part of my life that's not painful. I don't go to restaurants driving. There's no part of my life that isn't painful. If he would have known the heartache he left behind, Chad Harrell would have never done this to us. And there's no getting by it. Chad said in his note to us, he said, I hope you'll get I, past this. What? I hope you'll get past I this. I hope you'll get past this. There is no getting past yeah. it. Within a couple of days of losing Chad, mm -hmm. uh, we just decided that we had to do something. We didn't know what that meant or what we were going to do, but we knew that um, we had a couple of choices. We could either dig a big hole and climb down in it and never come back out, or we could try to keep another family from going through what we have gone through. The Heralds decided to create a new foundation called Keep the Spark Alive to help prevent teen suicide. They've been working closely with schools to help create new methods to tackle mental health issues as early as elementary school. We will now learn a little bit more about Keep the Spark Alive. Keep the Spark Alive is a foundation created by the Harrell family after the passing of Chad. Keep the Spark Alive has created programs for schools that focus on raising awareness of mental health and starting the conversation within the community. The Keep the Spark Alive website provides a lot of helpful tools for those dealing with mental health. For more information or to donate to the foundation, go to ktsa.org. Through the Heralds and their foundation, Blue Valley North is implementing programs they have helped to create as early as spring of 2019. As of right now, Blue Valley North does provide resources to its students. As of now, there are ways for you and your friends to get help. Come down with them and talk with a counselor, a social worker, a psychologist. They can just send us an email, either the psychologist, counselor, or social worker. We have a great mental health team here, um, and we all work together. Also, there are a lot of resources on the BVN website. Under Useful Links in the Student Wellbeing tab, click on the Depression slash Suicide button. A bunch of helpful resources are listed there. The students at North are already starting to make a change by attending events related to mental health awareness, such as the Speak Up Walk, creating their own events about suicide prevention, such as the AFSP Campus Walk, or creating their own clubs, such as the ASAP Club, to address mental health. We all have to work to be a part of the change to make BVN a safe place to learn and grow. We are all important and we are all loved. There are still students at this school that need help, and we could lose another person but we don't want that to ever happen again. Please stay. My happiness is no longer in the hands of someone else. I realized that what people
people say about me reflects who they are, not who I am. Suicide doesn't get rid of your pain. You pass it on to everyone It's okay to be a work in progress. Sharing your feelings doesn't make you weak. Some days are still such a struggle.